Some really good stuff out there today on both sides of the ball. Really pleased with the way our defense came out early. Um, we really didn't focus on the number of plays. We focused on the number of series in the game. Um, started in the red zone, then went backed up, then open field into half. Um, back to open field, finished with a red zone and an end of game scenario. Thought our defense started really fast. Um, offense finally found a little bit of rhythm in the open field and then uh, capitalized at the end of half. Um, which was good to see. Really pleased with the way our defensive line is performing right now, along with our linebackers being very sturdy against the run. It's really hard to pass against Ennis and KAD. Those guys are um, really good players. Um, you know, on the offensive line, it's still about finding the best five. At quarterback, it's about uh, being a smart, disciplined decision maker, knowing when to go for it and, and uh, when to take what the defense gives you. Um, so overall, I, I, I'm very pleased with the day. No injuries as of now that I know of, which is obviously in the second extended scrimmage, um, kind of the biggest thing that you want to walk out of there with knowing. So um, very pleased with the way our guys attacked this first two weeks. And now we're going to transition to an off day tomorrow and execution week next week, which it's all about playing well under pressure and performing well in critical situations. And we'll put our guys in those situations all next week. Um, to make sure that we're prepared for those critical moments in the game. So with that, I'll open up for any questions, but about conference realignment. Coach, the offensive line kind of have that same jump and improvement overall this week as they did in the first week of camp? Um, you know, I think, honestly, the first week of camp, they kind of came out and set the tone. I think our D-line kind of responded. Um, and, and so I think our offensive line is still trying to figure out how to match that intensity again. That's, that's kind of what you want. Iron sharpens iron. Um, and, and there's been some good play, good days and bad days. We, we got to do a much better job consistently protecting the quarterback. And whether that's, um, you know, protection is an 11-man job. Most people are going to blame uh, the offensive line. But it's the quarterbacks, tight ends, wide receivers, and uh, the O-line working as one. So that's an area of emphasis that we've got to be better at. Uh, and again, it comes down to execution. Yeah, I think they've responded really well. I think they took, uh, you know, you can either BCD, blame, complain, and defend poor performance, or you can respond and focus on the process of improvement. And, and I really felt like they've done that. Um, we're not by no means perfect, but there were some plays today out on the perimeter that were made and sprung because playing forward, which is something Coach Moore talks about all the time. After uh, somebody catches the ball, we got to play forward, block forward. I know uh, there was a couple of really big plays that uh, it was because wide receivers were playing forward, and, and uh, that was good to see today. But by no means are we a finished product. Coach, you mentioned Chris Abrams bringing in your opener. Yeah. How do you see him impacting things defensively this year? Um, I mean, I think just continually to, to, to get better. I think he matched up well against a lot of wide receivers last year. And him and Ennis combined were really good at PBUs. And, you know, I anticipate that continuing. He was player, he was defensive player and special teams player of the day maybe two days ago and, and a defensive player of the day maybe four days ago. So he's been, you know, picking off quarterbacks and blocking field goals. So he keeps that up. Crud, we'll be, we'll be happy. He'll get some more pizza sold. I know that. <laughs> How's that JC Carlisle's improved this year? And it's his important sometimes to go to one of those. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, that's why JC came back, was to improve on the fundamentals and improve on the techniques and be one year better and more mature. And, and that's what he's working on. I, I've seen more of a leadership role out of JC, not necessarily vocally, but body language wise, uh, being a great teammate, uh, studying tape. and. Uh, you know, I'm really proud of, of who JC has become and what he's becoming. Yeah, you know, I've seen more urgency out of Dalen. I think his urgency in and around the building has been much better. Um, he's been more consistent player. We've actually had to move him around a little bit uh, besides just the star playing him at the rover position. He's done a nice job of um, – accepting those opportunities to stay and play on the field. And, and um, he just got to continue to trust the process. He's not been able to create the amount of turnovers that he normally has in the first couple of weeks. But he can't get frustrated with that. He's got to continue just to do his job and improve fundamentally and know that you know the process never stops. You let jump into offense. What have you kind of seen from the tight ends? And how do you expect kind of their roles to possibly change with Kirby Moore's offense? 
Yeah, I've been very pleased with the way that Brett Norfleet and Jordan Harris have played in the run game. I think those guys' physical nature has, has surprised me and really the rest of the guys about how well that they play. Um, they've been physical and they've been consistent catching the football. Now, obviously, there's a lot of volume there that they're still having to learn. And, you know, I think it'll be a little bit easier for him once we get into game week. I thought Tyler Stevens had his best day that I've seen him have today. Um, consistently blocking, consistently catching, consistently making the right decisions, and, and hopefully that's a product of continued growth. Coach, you talk about the quarterback position. It comes down to being a smart, um, disciplined decision maker. Which yeah. quarterback is showing that the best throughout the Well, I think there's uh, been a lot of ups and downs in that, and, and uh, we, we still got a lot of work to do to fi figure that out. Who's speaking on the quarterback competition? Uh, you mentioned, obviously, the leadership earlier in yeah. camp and everything like mm -hmm. that. How have you seen kind of the guys respond to, to that request and just throughout the camp so far? Yeah, I don't think that's been an issue really for um, Brady. I think he's a natural leader. His gas meter is through the roof. Um, you know, so I think those guys respond to him. I think Sam's having to develop that with, you know, being a good teammate, getting to know the guys. Jake obviously has been that doing that before, so it's it's kind of natural to those two guys. Um, I think Jabari's done a really nice job with the freshmen. I think he's got a great relationship with those with those guys, but it's got to transcend just the class that you're in. It's got to be throughout the whole team. So. Yeah, I mentioned before, eight to nine guys on that offensive line still battling. Anybody in the second week that stood out to you? Yeah, I, I think we're down a little bit, maybe more to seven or eight now um, that are really consistently. Battling, I think Cameron Johnson's made a, a real uh, improvement. I've been really, really proud of Connor Tolleson. Um, his gas meter has gone through the roof, um, and he's really taken on um, um, ownership of that offensive line from a calling it, from being dedicated, from snapping the ball, um, from gaining weight. So I've been proud of him. Um, and I think that's that's naturally what happens when the game means something to you, and, and uh, there's an opportunity to to get put on the bench. Coach, what has the off season been like for, for Harrison Mead? As he talked about yesterday, kind of being in a little bit better shape because he expects to be on the, the kickoff team. What has it been for him? Yeah, Harrison and I are on the same diet. You know, we keep saying we're on a diet, but. Yeah. Um, no, he, he's he's trying to do all the right things consistently, but I did ask him if, if his mom brought some cinnamon rolls, and I don't think he told me the truth uh, for this weekend. I don't think he wanted to share them with me. Um, I, I'd say this though: I know Harrison's excited about trying to be the kickoff guy, but don't 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 write that down in pen yet. Blake Craig's coming, and uh, I've been very impressed with the way Blake has has kicked the ball and and uh, the way he's consistently uh, attacked every single day. So. Uh, you know, make sure Harrison doesn't count his chickens before they hatch. Well, have you seen it from Harrison? You talk about explosion and his kicks and, and things like that. Um, what has he been working on? Fundamentally? I'm, a, I'm, I'm actually going to just lie if I answer that question uh, consistently here. I just know that we've been working on him. Um, mental prep, um, consistent mental performance, and we've been talking about um, trying to be at a, uh, at a weight that he can consistently play with um, and keep it under control. We don't want him to lose any NIL value by not being the thicker kicker, so it's a fine line there. Coach, have you seen Mookie Cooper develop maturity this offseason? I think Mookie has learned to play without the ball, and I think that's the toughest challenge for a wide receiver is um, you're, you're, you're consistently critiqued and, and, and valued based off your production with the ball in your hand, but I think understanding now that he's been here so much that you know the play doesn't care who makes it. And consistently going out and doing your job and doing the little things and executing alignments and executing um, the routes as called and making sure you block and play on special teams. And uh, I, that's what I've seen Mookie do. And I'm really proud of him for doing that. And, and I think naturally when you do that, the ball finds you. You know, like who are some of the true freshmen and guys maybe who uh, have come over during summer and uh, obviously in the ball camp had to in the first camp that stood out to you so far? All of them, because if I don't name one, then we got issues. So all of them have stood out in a positive way. Yeah, you're also going to head back to school event later this evening. Just what's kind of NIL done to make that happen? Yeah, really proud of uh, of Darius for giving back. I, you know, we're blessed to be a blessing, and I think for him to 
uh, understand that and, and actively give back. I know I'm going to go support him. I hope everybody else will go support him. I know his teammates will be there. Um, I think it's just an attitude of gratitude. Um, and that was actually something we talked about in our meeting today. As we talk about being emotionally consistent, one of the ways you can do that is to view the world with an attitude of gratitude and understand that, you know, we're very fortunate and blessed to be here at Mizzou and in the SEC. And obviously, uh, for student athletes, it's it's, it's the best they've ever had it, um, and, and it's going to continue to get better. But uh, uh, they're blessed to be a blessing. And I talked about last week. You know, like I said, Coach Malzahn used to say, "Use your influence in a positive way," and uh, that's just what we're trying to do. No, I think every year and every team has a life of its own, and you can't get caught thinking that, well, we're, we've all been together, so we know what each other's doing. No, each year you have to start from the basics and build up. I think the difference is you can build a little faster, but you can't skip steps. And that that's what I've been really pleased with Coach Baker is that he hasn't tried to skip any steps. And I think that's partly because, obviously, as co-defense coordinator, Coach Smith, um, but also Coach uh, Peoples and Coach uh, Pogue do a really nice job of of uh, checking Coach Baker when he gets out of line. Coach, I understand the uh, offseason camp is a grind for players, but I know it's also a grind for coaches. How are you all holding up? How are you all going to be able to bring the same energy every day as the players? Yeah, we talked about it today. Like, this is hard compared to what? You know, like compared to what? Like, I mean, it's fall camp, and yeah, we, we work long days, but it, it sure beats, um, you know, some of the other jobs that are out there. That there. There's people that are working 40, 50, 60 hours a week, man, living paycheck to paycheck, really struggling. Um, there's single moms out there that are doing everything they can uh, just, just to make it. And uh, so I got no room to complain or gripe. You know, compared to what, this is pretty easy. And um, so I'm very blessed and fortunate. I think our staff feels the same way. We love what we do. We love who we're around. And um, there's a lot tougher jobs out there. You know, there's a lot There's a lot of people that have it a lot harder than I do. And, and uh, you know, our goal and hope is that just we play so well, maybe we take their minds off of it for a couple hours in the fall. You live what was it like to kind of have Chase Daniel back uh, for a couple of days and kind of what did you take away from that? Well, I started worrying about my job security. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Chase is phenomenal. Um, I mean, he's just a he's a natural born leader, great speaker. Obviously, um, he's got incredible um, um, uh, not buy in. He's got incredible um, credibility. Credibility. He's got incredible credibility with the players because him playing here, being under recruited, always had something to prove. Um, played so long in the NFL, always had that right kind of chip on his shoulder. You know, shared his story with the team, was able to give insight um, to both our, you know, both sides of the ball. And uh, you know, I think the other thing that was really cool about it is we talk about chasing two dreams all the time: life with football, life outside of the game. And he's transitioning into that second phase of his life: life outside of the game, and, and what's he want to do. And so, you know, that that hey, what is it that I might potentially do? Whether it's TV, you know, he's really focused on taking care of his kids right now and giving back to them because he sacrificed so much of their childhood pursuing his dream of being a, an NFL quarterback. I think he's really focused on being the best dad that he can while also serving a purpose on his day-to-day -day basis. And so it was really cool for our guys to see that um, while he was here for a couple a couple days. Yeah, um, honestly, it's all going to come down to consistency of performance. Like they do a really good job in individual, and they do a really good job of of team when it's just kind of like, oh, we're going to get four punts in a row. But today we went, you know, one v one, two v two, three v three, and and we had a couple of ducks punted out there. And so we got to, as a staff, find ways to create pressure on those guys so that they respond. Um, because you know we we've got a a pretty solid defense. We can't put them in bad positions because of a bad punt. So it's going to always be about consistency uh, at the punting position. You mentioned being impressed with Macalmo Johnson a little earlier. Uh, looked like he was away from the snap and perhaps yesterday. Yes, so can we start seeing more guards? No, nah, yeah. We're, we're, we moved him up with the guards today. Uh, well, we actually did it for the last four days. Um, he still will snap after practice and be ready. But uh, 
you know, right now Connor's done such a nice job that uh, it's time to let us solidify that job and see if there's another competition available. We good? Golly, y'all, y'all, you let that go a little longer than normal. <laughs>